Now, I ain't no hippie, tree-hugging, go-green son of a biscuit, but I understand that the future is going to be built on renewable energy. The sun has always powered the earth throughout its generations, millennials. Although for a short smidgen of time, humans like to burn things, so we burned what was here on the earth for energy. But now that we've grown smart enough to take the energy from that giant burning ball fire in the sky, we eventually will stop burning things here on the earth. It's the future. I'm not blind. It's just going to take some time. So you ready to open your eyes wide shut? Well, you don't have a choice because it's time for Chico Crypto. Chico ain't blind. That is why those projects zeroing in on the energy transition are on the top of my mind. And big news for my number one energy pick, Energy Web Chain. It was announced two days ago that Google was backing them and their efforts to help Bitcoin miners go green. Then just before this, the Crypto Climate Accord was launched, whose goal is to decarbonize the entire crypto industry by 2025, of which the energy web is leading with its technology. And the supporters of this accord, besides now Google, include many different players from crypto, NGOs, from government, and of course from energy. But let's just get back to Google backing Energy Web. What exactly are they doing? Well, Energy Web was a chosen winner from the Climate 2020 Impact Challenge, listed among the other winners from the hundreds upon hundreds of other applications. A winning is great, but exactly what are they doing together? What is Energy Web's goal? Well, the web put out a blog post detailing just that, and they said, The initiative will leverage the open source energy web stack to make it easy for consumers and DERS to register and participate in local and regional energy markets. Working with mobile network operators, IoT service providers, OEMs, and grid operators across Europe, the initiative will foster the procurement and flexibility services in a transparent, non-discriminatory, and market-based way, as prioritized by the UE Clean Energy Package. European Union, EU in on this? Well, then they say this grant and initiative will build upon existing open source software developed to support near identical use cases with transmission system operators, TSOs, Austrian Power Grid, 50 Hertz, and Elia, as well as distribution system operators, DSOs, Electra Caldense, and Fluvius. So what they're saying is the energy web already has a distributed system in the works across Europe. Energy web and Austrian power grid, proof of concept, announced to the public in January of 2020. Austrian power grid is the sole TSO for Austria, supplying the entire country. Thus, EWT has their entire country. There is one piece of Europe. The next TSO Energy Web list as having a system built is from Germany, 50 Hertz, a subsidiary of the European giant Elia Group, the third TSO they list, which is in the top five TSOs across Europe, covering all of Belgium. September of 2020, Energy Web and Elia Group announced a multi-year strategic partnership. So, Energy Web has a piece of Germany with one of their four TSOs, 50 Hertz, and all of Belgium through Elia. And then even further in Belgium with one of the three DSOs, Fluvius. As we can see, what they got going on with Fluvius is Deep, a GDPR-ready application for battery lifecycle management, all powered by the Energy Web switchboard and EWDOS. That's two more pieces of Europe. We had Austria, and now Belgium, and Germany. How about one more? Well, the last DSO they list is Electra Caldiense. Who is that? Well, February of this year, Energy Web dropped this blog. Catalonian grid operator Electra Caldiense, Energy Web, and Bamboo Energy announced grid flexibility project. Catalonian, that is the wealthiest and most populated region in Spain, including the city of Barcelona. Barcelona. Energy Web has a piece of Spain too. So including them, they have four countries across Europe, Belgium, Germany, and Austria too. I can only guess why Google chose them to accomplish this. Accomplish what though? Well, back to the blog on it, they said the initiative will focus on integrating the Energy Web stack with a number of electricity market participants, including but not limited to 
First listed, mobile network operators. In order to assign digital identities to all GSM enabled energy assets via SIM cards. Second listed, IoT service providers. In order to co-develop SIM cards with electricity sector roaming capabilities, i.e. independent of the mobile network operator, that will allow energy assets to directly register with the energy web tech stack. Those two are importante. I wonder who they could be accomplishing that with. Most likely Vodafone. As of May of last year, it was announced they would be collaborating to do just that. The article states, the partnership will combine SIM-centric blockchain technology, SCB, with IoT connectivity from Vodafone business to create secure IDs for energy assets. Which makes sense as Vodafone's carrier and IoT network spans all of Europe and the globe. Plus, they are a global partner of Google. Now it's time to dig into the not so apparent connections between everything. Back in the blog, they said, since it's common for mobile network operators, IoT service providers, and payment solution providers to operate their own proprietary data systems and architectures, the project will ensure interoperability between these systems, including multiple blockchains and the public energy web stack. Ultimately, at least 1 million DERS will integrate into electricity markets as part of the Google.org funded project. 1 million DERS is big, but the key there is multiple blockchains will integrate Energy Web stack, not just Energy Web's own. I wonder who could be the first to integrate the Energy Web stack into their blockchain. Well, let's just go back to Google. This isn't the first time Google has forayed into crypto. Their first foray was in February of last year, when they joined the Hedera Governing Council, running one of their enterprise validator nodes and making the data available for use. So why is the Google connection important? Well, a major utility decided to also join the Governing Council last month, a top five globally EDF. They would be doing the same as Google, running a validator node. I wonder who else EDF is connected to? Well, EDF is also running a validator node for the Energy Web chain, listed as one of their 32. And then, going to Hedera's website, one of their use cases listed for their token service is energy and sustainability. And they say, Hedera token service enables cost reductions and greater efficiencies for renewable energy credit, REC marketplaces, and platforms, enabling companies to meet their sustainability goals. Hmm, me thinks I'm spot on, but Hedera may just lead us into an undiscovered altcoin. Hedera has a list of companies building on top of their blockchain. Scrolling down, the one that sticks out to me in technology is Dovu, as it looks like it's carbon offsetting API, and looks to be connected to Ethereum DeFi as it rewards in an ERC-20. Clicking into Hedera's profile on Dovu, they say Dovu, partially owned by Jaguar Land Rover, is a tokenized data economy for DeFi carbon offsetting. Uh, what? Yeah, back in 2017, Jaguar Land Rover backed Dovu. But let me tell you, Dovu is moving with Hedera. Five months ago, it was announced they were building a proof of carbon service on the Hedera blockchain, which can be used across chains. What is being built is a fast, carbon efficient smart contract on Hedera combined with the DeFi ecosystem of Ethereum. And that combination of DeFi with Ethereum might be getting a tad more interesting later this year. In quarter one, they dropped their seed of white paper, which said storage of carbon offset value, leveraging an elastic supply with yield. I'm not gonna try and confuse you and dig into the white paper itself, but let me tell you what I took from it. It has something to do with tradable carbon pools, NFTs, and elastic tokens. But reading into the white paper, it says the project builds upon the work from Ocean Protocol Marketplace and elastic supply rebase tokens such as Ample, Base Protocol, and Rebase Capital. For the carbon market, we extend the functionality of Ocean, ensuring through an additional feature set to ensure that assets are verifiable and auditable. An ocean connection? Not bad, and I'm here in a Q3 launch of CDOV. Cheers, I'll see you next time.